I found time traveling in music making. Oh, I dreamed I could become an archaeologist. Little I knew that I will fulfill this dream by revisiting, reconstructing, reimagining, redreaming music, in other words, languages of times past in their own reality, as if, oh, I don't know about authenticity and about the details that could guarantee such connection with the reconstruction of music as it was played or heard or through which means. Perhaps translating it today on another instrument with other ears and another way of life where everything is faster than before days um, Perhaps the very concept of a tempo andante or allegro within the time period where the speed was the horse for the transport rather than the plane or the car and whatever. Does it really change once you change the environment, the context, and you isolate the work of art, like a statue that you see in a museum rather than in the temple in which it was, whenever it was, or is the idea of memory retracing so intensely what was the reality of another time? Is it an escapism only? And that's something I wonder myself. Do I spend my time pretending I am somewhere else? It takes an ornament of a Baroque era and God forbid there are many ornaments and many different types of Baroque music making and again it is a problem when we try to um, organize it and categorize it by this style and this genre in this place in this time that's how they played this ornament compared to another place in that time but we have treatises yes we have uh, instruments reconstructions, yes. Do we have the same acoustics, more or less? Yes, perhaps even enhanced with the recording engineering, where we can hear more of the things that were blending with perhaps nature or just the noises. Today we can um, reconstruct acoustically uh, in a recording the balances of the instruments in favor of the musical interest of them rather than only in the way they were organized by their own resonances. Which in a way is an enhancement. And after so many decades of these escapisms in plural, I still wonder when I see a student arrive with their own imagination, with their own ideas, um, their own ideals, more or less clear, perhaps um, I think and I could imagine that they're mistaken. So am I 
more knowledgeable because I have more experience? Is that what makes me more um, in place to tell them that's how you're supposed to do it? In this tempo, with this ornament, on this beat or before the beat? Perhaps teaching in that case is mostly organizing the um, rules, setting the uh, forbidden things in order to uh, narrow the possibility for allowed things, in order for the students themselves in turn to break the mold of all these rules set to organize their um, peregrination through these um, different styles which are inevitably foreign to them but somehow the music itself once you take out all stylistic effects all specific ways to recognize the differences between the different time periods and the different areas where they were performed, uh, danced, sung, prayed on, or um, whatever the music vehicle is a necessary um, expression of reflection or um, just entertainment in the sense of pure enjoyment or the singing itself, the voice and the rhythm, probably the two earliest music instruments, so to say, and then um, all the other more elaborate instruments which were built to imitate the voice or the drums or the prolongation of the resonance and um, the wind in the pipes in the organ and so on. So it seems to me like ultimately we are immersed in nature and we hear music as a language probably connected to the mother tongue that we speak and that's why in the temperament of the people who lived in the times where we immerse ourselves in, in escapism we need to also study if we have curiosity, time and a sense of capacity even to organize our thoughts so that we can um, summarize and filter their own historic reality, their own um, fears in the sense of um, God's fear, um, wars, uh, possessions, um, a sense of appreciation, things like the way we extract their music out of their own context and we place them in the context of today as if we isolate them independently of the roots from which these um, thoughts, musical thoughts of theirs, notated hastily or precisely or as precisely as they needed, not that probably, and that's what I start to become more and more aware of, they did not plan to leave it for us centuries ahead. <clears throat> Therefore their notation was necessarily incomplete for the interpretation if ever that concept even existed because people just played their own music or presented their own work but because it was in the context of their own time and their own um, customs a lot of the notation was unnecessary first of all for gaining time and time was precious life was short and um, I'm sure that we can reconstitute this kind of um, musical endeavor that they lived through because of their lives. 
Now, it is true that if you take the time to learn how to perform technically a piece in terms of the performance itself, then to immerse yourself in the stylistic um, specific detail of each of their genres and their time periods, then you study the history of the performers in terms of where their lives brought them to or till or through how they prevailed this, how they assimilated that, um, this Italianate tradition, this German tradition, this French tradition. Of course, nas nations didn't exist for most of them. It was all about um, independent and because of the lack of complete quick capacity of transport, um, the traditions were sedentary and uh, multiple uh, in small areas compared to, well, today in few hours you can be so far. But while the body travels very far, how fast does the mind travel? The understanding, the immersion in the reality of other people's um, ways of worshipping, ways of taking care of their dead, um, their myths, their um, temperaments, the organization of their thoughts about the meanings of things, or the lack of, or the way differing from the way we think they did or the way we do, and we assume perhaps more than we know, because traces erase with time. Archaeology teaches us well with um, the different layers of grounds through the time periods and then the calamities and then the um, miraculous survival of ruins that tell us so much while moving us so much. In a way, it's a paradox for me to discover how much a ruined temple moves me more than its 3D reconstitution. And so then I wonder if I transpose this in the music making for the music of the past in our present, what does it really mean to us? Do we just take what we like from it? Do we really play it like it was supposed to be have been heard? Or can we even attune our ears connected to our um, mindsets where we have heard, let's say, dissonances that are so um, prevailing over the consonances in the post-tonal writing. Well, the very concept of them evolved to the point to which the audacities of some dissonances within consonant tonality uh, research or um, centered um, energy of the musical um, expression, phrasing, um, rhetoric, it seems to me like the audacities of the harmonic audacities of the past escape us today. So in order to appreciate them and therefore present them either with irony, either with stress, um, with uh, emotion or with a certain element of rubato or of, uh, displaying them with delay and having the bass line disconnected from the melodic line in order to bring out one and then coat it of after. All these are elements of emotional expression which probably inevitably are not the way people heard then because we cannot place ourselves in a situation where we haven't heard, let's say, in music Rachmaninoff or Tchaikovsky when we play uh, Mozart or Beethoven. 
And that could be said, of course, chronologically for everything, it makes so much obvious sense that it's almost like senseless for me even to mention it. But mostly so because in piano playing, the instrument being so universal can play so many repertoires of its own and of all the others transcribed on it. Of course, it won't be authentic and it won't be complete, but it would be suggested but capable, and therefore um, betray the stylistic realities of instruments which were really connected to their own time period. Playing a Rachmaninoff concerto on the harpsichord is obviously ludicrous, but seemingly to play Tchaikovsky concerto on the piano seems natural, but on the Opposite, we play Bach, Couperin, and um, Scarlatti on the piano, and so we should not, right? We should only play music on the instruments on which they were written. According to that, we um, find in the modern piano the capacity to completely break all necessity of stylistic um, precision of the phrasing, the fingering, the articulation, the expression, the imitation of the voice or of the bowed instruments of the time with the amount of notes per notes uh, per, per, um, bow. And the idea that music is the expression of their own um, resonance in, ter in terms of their acoustics in terms of their churches, in terms of their temples, in terms of their um, um, gardens, perhaps at night, where the lute is heard because of the silence, the one without noises, that we are not even obviously always aware of in daily life today, that are everywhere all the time. Worse, recorded music in backgrounds makes us um, not even notice that music is played. And somehow the silence in, a, in an office seems awkward and they always have to have some kind of background music in elevators, in, in airplanes when you wait to take off, in the airports themselves. It seems like um, Music is some kind of soothing element also in underground parkings because it's so anguishing. It's almost uh, Dante's Inferno to go underground, underground, underground uh, further to find a spot to park. And so the music soothes and um, relaxes that stress, that tension, that fear, that uh, anxiety. Deeply so, of course, regardless in comparison to wars and terrible um, cruelty of humans on each other through history. So it was music for each of their time periods, not only the expression of their um, religious beliefs or their um, entertainment or, or the, the traditional marking of ceremonies about passage of uh, time, um, age, um, ritual music was this, yeah, was the, um, not only background, but in a way, the soundtrack of their lives is if they were in a in a movie that was not filmed or recorded poetry painting sculpture all art forms which um, symbolize life the hopes lives fears lives desperation, lives um, meaning or meaninglessness or shortness. I find that without to over-philosophize, one can still find in every piece of music we play, of course, a beginning and an end.
because it's written and inside all kinds of expressions that are to imitate nature, birds, voices, sounds um, of, um, of noises even imitated. So the poetry is not to replicate nature, it's to retell it the way our psyche sees it, just like the Impressionist painters did. And a photography, as precisely factual as it is, becomes poetic once you're outside of a time period and you look at old pictures of times past, even if they are factual in their own reality, the fact that all the people or all the nature that you see no more exists or has changed through the seasons to the point to which you don't recognize the geographic place because it has evolved with the changes of climate and all, you find out that um, the representation of life through art is a poem by itself. The idea of reimagining soulfully what these elements mean to us in terms of um, a sunset and a sunrise, not only for what it is, but for what it talks to us through suggestive moods, dying, falling asleep, awakening and um, bursting uh, between sunset and sunrise. Well, okay, it's a cliché and I agree when I think about it, I think, hey, I'm reductive to only reduce it to my own vision of things musically. Uh, because I reduce it to my own life's uh, experience. But who am I but a human who arrived without to know why, who will live not knowing when, and while being here in nature around humans for whom I want to be useful. His Mademoiselle Boulanger, when I was a child, told me that since I was given a musical gift, I have to give it in turn. And therefore, um, when uh, she told me, if you don't like the way the music is written, because I was not critical, but, well, inside reading music, I was surprised and, and um, commenting, why this, why not that? Why didn't they do this this way or that way? Because I had some intuitions, not very clearly, but I had them. And she told me then, write your own, but if you play theirs, play like it is, meant to be. So when you face this inevitable questions about um, the meaning of all of this, and you cannot find the answer, but through faith or through um, humanism in its pure form, then yes, that's what I do. Um, it humbles me to be um, helpful to um, students. I realize I'm one ingredient among many that they'll receive from different people and places and their own experience until they build their own um, summary of life that represents their trajectory. And it's not just retracing because of my experience the ways to do because that's the way I do. I play this way, that's the right way. No, that is to question. I am never reached and thankfully perhaps will never reach a point where I know how it's supposed to be. I hear people do the way I would love to be and I realize this is how it's supposed to be. Or it's even better than great, is just right. Because sometimes, and we differ the ways we approach the pieces through our own seasons of lives, um, because of our different influences and different ways we heard other play. And it's so important to manage to, to bring to the student a sense of truth that they have to find within themselves that represents their own truth beyond how others play 
or how others hear the same piece, or how others write about the same piece, or let less me as the teacher whom they chose compared to another teacher. And so when they realize, as they will, or they already do, that music means so many different things to so many different people, even the same piece, let less different styles and genres, but even the same piece. And all of them, or each of them, individually, are incredibly valuable in their um, traditions, backgrounds, um, thinking, um, feeling, uh, understanding, choosing how to do this rather than that, um, in the case of um, a tempo choice, in the case of a sound quality, of extraction of the sounds, the voicing, the what bringing out or just not bringing out, bringing all out and let it play itself, or choose how to invest the interpretation with an incredible degree of um, persuaded, Hmm. self-determination in the conviction that this is the way it's supposed to be according to me. And when you translate that to I love it that way, I like it rather this way, and if you want to give argumented ans uh, complementary explanation, then you enter in tradition, in style, in um, time period. Um, yes, and then you translate it through an instrument if it's not the same. But ultimately, you realize that the composers themselves who left us this music probably thought music beyond not only their own instruments or their own um, genres of music for which they were hired to write or they had to write, but within they express something more timeless that's meaningful to them. And that's what I find very touching within a Haydn piece. It's almost nested inside, deep in. It's not like on the, on the surface where the formal, let's say in Haydn music overplays the essence, but the essence is there, very intense, even if not so openly displayed, and then I can relate and say, oh yes, I, I can feel what he meant, or what he felt, or what he translated through music poetically of his own, what it meant to him. It's kind of giving the student a sense of not only an explanation of the why, but also through the example probably of playing it, while also displaying it to bring them to uh, to show them our, at least in my case, of course, because I only can talk for me, um, the earnestness of my connection to the piece and the relentless search to find exactly how to complete the phrase, to build it, to to, to bring it alive. It's almost like injecting air in the lungs. The Greeks in the ancient days used to call psyche the, the, the breath for the soul. To reinstate life inside a score which it, to me of the music paper is dead scroll. It comes alive when you put in the vowels, when you put the air in the lungs, when you put the tempo, the drive, when you play it as if it means the life to you, even if it's so remote from your own paradigm, from your own way of thinking, understanding the world. And you wonder why don't we just then play the music of our own time, as diverse as it is in the post-tonal system in which we are for past century already of time periods, and um, why do we still revisit the music of the past as our present, this time machine going backwards and not forwards, or at least not even with our own time? Why are we so eager to live in a museum in which we recreate the imagination, the 
the uh, musical um, um, expression through the times that are no more as if they were during the ephemeral element of time in which we play them and I wonder even sometimes if they were possible how would the composers of the past react towards our studying them analyzing them developing their thoughts um, explaining making theses about every possible of their perhaps mostly subconscious actions as composers perhaps they were conscient or perhaps it was just something they didn't have the time to elaborate other than just do and we have the time today in awe of them and in desire to understand better to develop such knowledge about them so we teach to our students the toolbox of the know-how of the of this time period and so of course we could in a way clone it and make more music of the past today with our own flair but so that was the in a way the beginning of the 20th century um, was, um, neoclassical period and some people considered it just a superficial pasticcio other people considered it as a necessary like renaissance times return to the antiquities in order to um, inspire ourselves from their philosophy every times um, searched for their own um, future in in distant roots perhaps misreading them and making ideologies that are totally wrong <laughs> but today very few of us in music deal musically only with the music of today in its variety of uh, genres and styles and it's puzzling probably more than in times past where the tonal system was a unifying language even with different styles and um, genres but um, through centuries of Western musical culture and its notation in classical music as people call it today through the ages there are common points that are a language that evolves but is in the roots having the same alphabet let's say or the same grammar modifying the grammar but not reinventing the grammar and if each composer has today their own alphabet their own grammar by essence they become unfortunately opaque to people who don't know them so they don't not appreciate them they just can't understand them it's like as if every human on earth had their own language they wouldn't be able to speak to each other <laughs> not that when they have a common language they don't end up in wars and horrible massacres and history has taught us that but the fact that communication for factual things is more practical when people share the language then after that you can study and become a specialist of a given composer's musical universe but you won't have the time to develop that for all and because recording systems of sound plus recording systems um, of notation with evolution of the notation into modern notation allow us to explore and conserve music um, of the past today even to the point to which the concept of interpretations which didn't exist now becomes an oeuvre of its own over the oeuvre itself of the compositions and so without this capacity to um, keep things in to conserve music in sounds in videos in uh, in music scores in uh, all kinds of forms we create um, a trace that becomes very heavy to um, to carry compared to the ephemeral disappearing trace of the past where nothing was recordable nothing was keepable everything was ephemeral literally 
And um, I find it fascinating to be able to reconstitute music of the past or as, as, in, as much of an endeavor as to discover music of today because they're both puzzling. The mind, the creative mind, is fascinating. How much beauties can come out of a brain and how many uglinesses can happen when you see the traces left of human's history. Yeah, we study a lot, we learn a lot, we visit a lot, we try to we try to instruct ourselves, we try to bonify our understanding of what moves us and what intrigues us, what puzzles us. The fact that we know that we want to understand doesn't stop us from trying to understand from planets to um, atoms. I mean, micro, macro, everything is puzzling and at the same time during this parenthesis on Earth, we're given life and we're given a thought capacity to think about things that so much are beyond our realm of understanding, let less of even conceiving, let less um, naming. But then we have this sense of intuition, this sense of connection, the sense of attraction for, for um, people, places, time periods, affinities. We don't know always what is the right word, but we sense it, we feel it. And ultimately when crossroads in life comes in, very often we, we choose very often what ultimately we feel we should be doing more than only the reflection of the logic though obviously we need logic and we harness our understanding through our logic but there is also the intuition and music making is music um, serving rather the music the students the chamber music partners the scholars the um, editors, the uh, publishers, the recorders, um, the way to re-express something that already exists or the way to imagine an expression of something hasn't yet been explored and the capacity of ours to even comprehend it humbles me. And it's through the pristine um, hearing and musical flame from each of the students coming through my studio my I, I, I find such hope because I find them to be all in their individual way um, driven by something so beautifully bigger and greater than them but towards which they, they feel they have to go That's why I'm so moved, because when you visit those museums, you always see artworks. But somehow the timelessness of an artwork, which was not meant to be, but remains a trace of humankind somehow prevailing ephemerally often, over the horrors of wars and wars and wars and wars and wars that you study in history, which were inevitably, as they are still, unfortunately, the reality. So the escapism, the alternative reality, the daydreaming, the poetic view of things make perhaps the reality more bearable to the human psyche, to the humanity in us, to the hope of good, to the hope of better, 
to the hope of um, earnest it's a privilege to think about it even beyond survival which is the essential and which um, through the times was always the struggle and then again they found on top of all this struggle the time to create artworks which either represent their divinities or their own selves or their imaginations the fruit of the brain the fruit of their manipulation with their arms and uh, with their bodies so they embody um, or they try to translate in figurines or in drawings in caves or something that meant to them as if by looking at it they see a mirror of themselves or their fears or their hopes or their desires beyond death and why and how and it must have been terrifying not that it's less now even science has gone so much further in helping health compared to before that there is something that draws us to do something that is not rational which is art <laughs> why art entertaining reflective puzzling storytelling emotional all together sung danced played um, genres and all of that filtered by the temperaments of people from their own areas of the world if it were really a universal language, wow wouldn't music help peace? <laughs> but then again, there's also military music entertaining excitement and um, capacity to legally kill other people under war times thankfully outside of war times it is criminal to kill other people so it's always a question of context so perhaps without to kill or die playing on the piano a music of a past written for another instrument is in itself a crime and for purists in music making um, who entertain the importance of connecting literally through the way of playing and the instruments on which it was played our own capacity of hearing tuning um, um, intervals dissonances consonants the whole musical universe that is homogenized in the sounds differently with the modern instruments so in a way I don't know if I betray or I universalize by playing them on the modern piano when they were written let's say for the lute or the harpsichord in fact it's important to doubt It doesn't take away my convictions but it allows me to think from the point of view of the others the point of view of a student whom I don't disrespect because they don't have the experience I respect because they come to search something from me about the music service serving the muse We have to define every time and redefine every time what it is that we want to do with the music work. What it is to serve it right, what it is to praise it, what it is to, um, to find the um, root cause for which we do it. What fulfills us? 
what fulfills these who will hear it and while hearing it go through their own reflective or emotive or titillated, I mean, energized, driven connection to it to upload at the end of the performance as if when you watch sports you don't all act but you become part of the action even if you're sedentary um, same way you not all of them play the music one or two or several do for more who don't but they participate by becoming involved in that moment of sharing that instant of um, bringing it alive, literally, the pulse, the phrasing, the rhythm, the intensity, the drive, the everything. So it feels like being active-passive while listening and the performer being by essence active. We all are together in the making and the hearing of it, even if even if inevitably we have the criticism of it's not supposed to be played like this, or I don't like it, or it should have been different in this way or that way. Again, the same piece of music means so many different things to so many different people among the educated ones, not to mention the ones who don't know about it and who like it, perhaps for the wrong reasons, by the wrong performers in terms of the authenticity of the expression for those who know. But they like it and say, oh, I like it better that way. But they don't know why. They don't have criteria that are palpable according to other people's criteria. And then you study, you learn, you develop an understanding to the point to which then you discriminate. You discriminate this because of that, that because of this. And I find that this plethora of a puzzling amount of ways to... Um, um, build an understanding, a meaning, a structural organization of the thoughts. When you play this, you play this way. When you think that, you organize it this way. You bring this that way and you... In other words, every way you would shed light on a different way of the textures, uh, different layers, you take a subjective point of view and you bring it to an audience. And you say, this is what it's meaningful for me in this section or in this transition and how it morphs into the next section and how the piece itself goes from this to that and the thematic material evolves, the modulation brings this atmosphere change or the um, coating of the melodic line brings me to hear the secondary line which is all more beautiful than the main line so I'm going to bring it more I'm going to bring it equal or I'm going to choose not to bring it so I can do shadows and lights to basically customize to my interpretation or my reading therefore my translation literally from interpretation the text itself it's fascinating how many paths there can be reading between the lines of the notation itself which suggested more than it defined given the fact that it was meant for their own time period where the tradition was so clear that they didn't have to write it down or had time to write it down today we fill those gaps with our understanding knowledge um, and then stylistic schools where one pretends to know it better than the others or be more authentic than the others. If that is the criteria, that's one way. Others can say, I don't care for authenticity, I care for the way it means to me outside of its uh, time period. In other words, chronology and archaeology and... Um, um, layered uh, time periods organization of understanding of stylistic evolution when we have today the luxury to study such long-term evolutions we can define different stylistic elements after all all the composers we play of the past didn't have that luxury in their own time for their own past layers of times they didn't have access to the music didn't have libraries recordings editions um, um, articles i mean they did but more limited and and more well, those who could afford to travel, to meet, to, to, to discover, to do the tour of their um, um, cultural uh, 
landscapes for a sculptor, for a writer, for a painter, for a musician, um, for a mathematician, for a philosopher, for a medical doctor, for a, all these um, universal knowledges, well that's university for, um, brought them to um, broaden their own views even when times and availabilities of elements of their own past were so scarce. I imagine they would have been probably overwhelmed to know how much we we can today access incredible plethoras of um, elements of the past perhaps to the point to which it chokes us for our own creativity onwards. Perhaps they were in a bliss of their ignorance because it allowed them to freely think the time where they were in rather than taking the time to study all the past because in a way it's um, overwhelming. Perhaps choking was a bit of a strong word that I used in my spontaneous talk to you but it is obviously a balance to find between uh, how much do I get over influenced by over learning the past in what I do today if I write a music today will it be subconsciously or consciently influenced by music of the past that I like possibly but that was always the case your early Beethoven sounds like Haydn early everything sounds like something from before because there is a chain of transmission of influence of learning of um, inf of just a sort of a musical genetics you don't have spontaneous generations appear of nowhere but then you have development augmentation um, uh, tran um, transgression um, breaking the rules of what uh, you were taught and then in order to to place it within whatever individual personal um, drive brings you to create something if not new at least um, different transformational or coming from a former transformation i find all this to be humbling to watch through time some did something more innovative for their own time period than today. But today, what do we always privilege? And it all depends what we praise, what are our criteria, what are our hopes, what are our ideas. And I find it fascinating when all of our being creates something new, which could remind to others something of the past in one aspect, but not completely. This reminds like genetics. I think your nephew looks just like grand aunt, but you know, not totally. And I think in music, of course, we can say like in all art forms that this reminds us of this and this reminds us of that. But in the past, they had less access to things to remind them of. So perhaps that was in a way more liberating for them. But perhaps not. But these thoughts are inevitable in our minds because we don't realize always that we have the, in music today, the, um, and through technology, at the click of a button, a chance to enter universes that we don't perhaps even understand, comprehend, but that we just discover just because we can. And we filter through our own psyche of the moment of the capacity to even and this not understand that's probably pretentious but to absorb let's say like sponges we absorb this we absorb that create styles of uh, prefer preferences for us oh i like more this than that <coughs> um but we have this <coughs> encyclopedic approach hmm. And ultimately, we have the vulnerability of our ephemeral passage here. We do the best of it for the others, directly or indirectly.
what more meaningfully beautiful than to do it for others directly, teaching. As if to say, take the best of what I have experienced and do something meaningful with it for yourself, through yourself, for the others. And this arborescence will bring, hopefully, more meaning and depth and humanity, the best of humanity in us. Probably all this is ephemeral, naive fantasies of mine. But I like to believe it, that it can happen even unspoken, unexplained, un untold, just while people hear each other's music or music making by itself. It contains so much of all of us, by little bits.